Hey folks, welcome back to another video about autonomous driving. Today, instead of our usual ride video, I want to take a look at depots. Now, why do we care about depots? As we see autonomous driving get better and better, the focus starts to turn to scaling and the efficiency of the depot operation, the way that you park, charge, handle data offload and maintenance, that can make a big difference in the profitability of the service or even whether the service can be scaled up at all. So let's spend a few minutes to observe Waymo's depot and see what we can learn. We're gonna start here at the location on 14th Street in San Francisco, which is across the street from Foods Co. And you can see this is a location where the gate is open and cars kind of come and go as they please. Uh, this one just came in. Uh, I assume that this is uh, because the car has nothing to do. Now it's driving very slowly up to its desired spot. Uh, Signals does this kind of weird turn to the right and then uh, stop and then back to the left. And then it's gonna throw on the reverse lights. There we go. And then it's gonna back into the spot. And it's pretty cool to see all these cars. Uh, it seems like they're on all the time because all the cars are, are spinning and they're just kind of parked there and, and ready to go. So speaking of ready to go, now here we are a couple minutes later and I saw that same car pulling back out and uh, presumably it's been dispatched to pick up a customer or something like that. All the driving in the parking lot is like painfully slow. You get the idea, we'll skip to the next one. Now I'm standing by the exit of this parking lot trying to get a better view of how the cars pull into traffic. And we're looking at a different vehicle now as it painfully rolls up to the exit of the lot. And it's unclear whether this is marked as a stop sign or maybe it's just yielding to me. It's a little bit hesitant, uh, but eventually it figures it out and needs to pull into traffic onto 14th. And because there's no one coming, it can just smoothly make that turn and we're off to the races. Now, same thing going on in this clip. We have the driverless vehicle. It's probably been hailed by someone and it's turning into cross traffic. This time there is a car coming, but it's in an adjacent lane, so it doesn't affect the Waymo and we're off. After I saw a couple cars come and go, I got the bright idea. Well, you know, I can also hail one of these cars and maybe I can cause one to become unparked and come out and get me. So I put the destination in as normal and here I'm adjusting the pickup and putting it just beyond the end of the parking lot. And now, in fact, it has matched me to one of the cars that's in the parking lot. It's the one off the end that started moving and very painfully coming to my location. The interesting thing is that they've chosen to show the location of the car in the app, even when the car is within the depot. So if you hail the Waymo, you can zoom all the way in. And if you see that little line segment going into the parking lot, then that's how you know it's coming from the depot. So it gets a little bit closer, we get a good look at the plate, and yep, it's definitely our car. At this point, I'm remembering that Waymo has a no-show fee that I believe gets charged when the car shows up, but then you cancel the ride after the car has already pulled over. So before that happens, I have a very short uh, distance that I can cancel the ride. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and cancel it because I don't actually wanna take it. Just as the car that I hailed left the depot, another unrelated car is coming back. And that gives you an idea of how busy these places are. The last interesting thing I saw at this location is roadside assistance. They seem to have some kind of procedure where the person in the car needs to show their ID badge to somebody in the security booth as they enter the parking lot. And by the way, the security booth is behind this black tarp. You can't really see it in this shot. Just like the Waymos, the roadside assistance van apparently needs to turn on its hazard lights when it enters the parking lot. And then I guess they also drive very, very slowly to get to wherever they wanna go. If you've seen my other videos, you know that the other roadside assistance van I saw was uh, also a Ford Focus and that one had its tail light broken. But this one seems to have all the lights working. Now moving on to another depot, this one is at Harrison and 3rd Street, and when I visited, there was just this one car there. This location is pretty bare bones, except for some sort of garage in the back and possibly another roadside assistance van. When I visited, there was only one car parked in this lot. Unlike the cars in the other lot, 
This car had its hazard lights on. Now I'm gonna try to hail this car just like I did with the previous depot. And then I'm gonna adjust the pickup pin. Tap the adjust on map button. I wanna be picked up in a place that's just outside of this uh, parking lot. That way I can maximize my chances of getting matched to this exact car. Now I'm gonna tap request and we'll see what we get. Unfortunately, we did not get that car. We got some unknown car that still has a rider inside apparently, so it's not even showing us where that car is. I'm guessing we didn't get the car in the depot because the hazard lights probably have some meaning, like maybe the car needs human attention of some kind. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel and that's the end of that. This is the third location I visited. This is Waymo's main depot on Tolan Street, which is near Restaurant Depot, if you know where that is. The first thing I noticed here was the increased security. This location has gates that open and close on every entrance and exit to the parking lot. Now the Waymo in there wants to get out. There is a person in the security booth who appears to be opening and closing the gate. The other locations also had gates, but those were kept open all the time. So there's nothing physically stopping you from entering the parking lot if you really wanted to. Now that the gate is all the way open, the Waymo apparently knows that it's safe to proceed. So then it's just gonna come out and turn onto Tolan Street at a very excruciating and, and slow speed. With Tolan, there is significant cross traffic, but this time it looks like the Waymo got lucky. Now coming around the corner, the building to our left belongs to Waymo and the parking lot we just saw is beyond that building. I've never seen these doors open, so I don't really know what's inside. Toward the far end of this building, we have the entrance of the parking lot that we saw earlier. And we have an inverse process of uh, the cars exiting the depot. So in this case, the Waymo driverless or not is gonna come up to the gate. There is a person in the security booth who needs to open and close it. If there are people inside, uh, for example, if the car has a safety driver, the security person is going to need to see their badge before they open the gate. So I couldn't really tell for this particular car because of the distance I was at, but given that the person is opening and closing the window to their booth, it's safe to assume that car had a safety driver inside and the driverless car after it is patiently waiting in line to enter the parking lot. If you've ever tried to catch a Waymo ride in this area, whether the destination or the pickup is here, you probably notice that the entire depot is blocked off, so you can't actually pick destinations inside. And I assume that's a result of the security protocol here, where if you were able to do that, and you could hide somehow in the car, you know, the rear windows are pretty tinted, you could be lying down in the back seat or something like that, you could probably get into their depot that way. Now the last car in this line is coming into the parking lot. This last one is manually driven and it appears that this driver has chosen to turn on the hazard lights as they enter the parking lot. I assume that's part of some procedure that they're supposed to follow. Um, and then you think that's the last car, but uh, just as the gate closes, there's a straggler here and it's about to show up. Yep, there you go. Poor driverless Waymo getting locked out in the cold. Um, and fortunately, it, it seems like it perceives the gate pretty well uh, as it opens and closes, waits for it to open, and then, you know, we're back on our way. Next up, we have this aerial top-down shot of uh, what happens in the parking lot after the car goes in. In the bottom right corner of this frame, that's the gate that we just saw in the previous clip. And at the top, there is a car that's driving to its preferred charging spot at a snail's pace. Now in these shots, it's kind of hard to tell whether the car is being driven autonomously or whether there's potentially a safety driver inside who could be operating the car manually. And uh, we can make some educated guesses. It, it's really hard to know for sure. So in this case, nobody comes out of the car after it parks. And also, as it was driving forward and now reverse uh, because it didn't like that spot for some reason, the path it takes is kind of wiggly and it's pretty unreasonable for a human to drive this way, but we have seen when Waymos are in this multi-point turn maneuvering mode, they do tend to um, uh, not really drive in straight lines. So now this car is reversing for some reason, likes this charger better or something like that. 
the car behind it is patiently yielding. Now it pulls in and, and everyone behind can go. Also at a snail's pace. Here are a couple more examples of um, interesting autonomous parking jobs. In this clip, the car coming from the left with the art wrap is definitely driverless, so we can see through the front windshield. And it's, uh, it's gonna come around the corner here, taking a, you can see the steering wheel, it's like going back and forth. Uh, taking an interesting uh, large radius turn, and then it's gonna stop and uh, think for a little bit. And the car behind, uh, which is also driverless, is uh, appropriately yielding. And it looks like it wants to park in the right aisle because it has the right turn signal on, but actually it's gonna end up in one of the charging spots on the left here. So it's unclear to me whether the parking is indecisive about which spot it wants to take, or maybe it's, uh, you know, it's, it's seeing that the car is driving a squiggly trajectory and it's putting on the, the turn signal on, on either side. So that one finally makes it in and uh, the, the very patient driverless Waymo behind it can continue along its, its way. Now I have another clip of two cars parking at the same time. Both of them appear to be driverless and they're coming from the left. So in this zoomed in shot, we are getting pretty lucky with the lighting at this time of day because we can see that the wheel inside is turning and there are no hands on the wheel. We can be pretty sure that these are driverless. Now, the interesting thing here is that the first car successfully makes this turn, just like the other two cars we saw in the previous clip. Does a little bit of a pause here, which seems to be a pattern. The second car, for some reason, it decides, you know, it, it doesn't have enough radius to make this turn, and then actually does a little, little multi-point turn, a little reverse here, and then after the reverse, it continues forward on its very squiggly path. Again, with these two cars, we have interesting turn signal usage where the cars will put on the right turn signal now, but eventually at the end of this clip, they're both gonna park on the left side where the chargers are. Now, while we wait for these two cars to make it to their charging spots, I wanna share some observations about what happens to driverless cars during the charging stop. Somebody in a yellow vest will come plug the car in and also take a look inside, probably to make sure that there was nothing left behind and that the car is clean and ready to go. They also open the trunk on some vehicles and they seem to spend more time in the trunk. My best guess is that this is how data offload happens. Generally, an autonomous vehicle needs to upload data about its drives, for example, the sensor data that it captures or some of the decisions that it made. The most common way is disk swapping because you can exchange a large amount of data by just unplugging a drive and plugging a fresh one in. Since Waymo's computer is in the trunk, that's my best guess for why they need to open it on some stops. We can't rule out other data transfer techniques such as wired or wireless networking, but because they aren't running ethernet cables out to each car and because there's no suspicious looking antenna on the building, I think it's very likely that they're swapping disks around. When it's time to pick up a customer, just like we saw in the other locations, the cars at this location can also unpark themselves and drive toward the gate autonomously. The unparking job is a bit smoother than the parking jobs I saw, but it's still painfully slow and way slower than I would do it if I were driving the car. While we watch these two cars try to get onto the main street, I wanna take a moment to discuss why that might not matter so much. It doesn't really matter if the car takes five minutes circling the parking lot and driving in forward and reverse to park itself, because that's time that humans are not spending parking the cars. Imagine you had 10 cars come back to the garage at the same time. You don't need five or 10 people to go out and bring them from the gate to the charging spots if the cars can do it autonomously, right? So you're spending robot time instead of human time. Now, robot time is not free, and eventually you do have to worry about utilization if your cars are spending a lot of time parking themselves instead of charging or serving customers but it doesn't seem to be a huge issue for them right now. A couple more bonus clips to close out this video. I saw one car being driven to kind of, I guess, a timeout spot next to the building, and it just stayed there with the car still powered on and the doors unlocked. So not exactly sure what that's for. If you have any ideas or if you know, uh, please reach out or leave a comment below. 
There's also this area in the back of the parking lot where a bunch of Waymos are parked and they're not being used. Some of them have slightly different sensors and there's one in the top left corner that looks like it's been torn apart. Well, that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching this video. If you saw something that I missed, please make sure to leave a comment below. And if you enjoy this video, consider supporting the channel on Patreon. Your support will help fund future video production. Thanks again and have a great day.